I'm Thomas Baldrick here at ATS in Denver with the woman all of America is talking about, Miss Hillary. Hillary Dubrock, she is from Massachusetts General Hospital. Thanks for coming by. Thank you for having me. Fun name to have these days, huh? <laughs> it is, it is. Okay. You're presenting two posters on porto pulmonary hypertension. What can you tell us about each of these? So portal pulmonary hypertension is a subtype of WHO group one pulmonary hypertension. And it's associated with a high mortality and has uh, significant implications for patients' eligibility for liver transplant as well. So we're studying sort of two areas of portal pulmonary hypertension. The first is uh, we're looking at uh, biomarkers to try and understand new pathways that may be involved in the development of portal pulmonary hypertension. And then the second is really to try and understand the role of liver transplant in the management of portal pulmonary hypertension. So the first poster I have is uh, we looked at endothelin gradients across the pulmonary circulation in patients with portal pulmonary hypertension compared to controls who had cirrhosis. And um, our main goal was to see if endothelin was high in the pulmonary circulation of patients with portal pulmonary hypertension, and then also to determine if it was elevated uh, due to increased production in the pulmonary circulation or potentially decreased clearance from the liver. So we took samples from across the circulation during right heart catheterization. What we found uh, actually is that the concentrations of endothelin in the pulmonary circulation and really throughout the circulation was the same in patients with portal pulmonary hypertension and the cirrhotic controls that we looked at. So we didn't identify a significant difference. So what would be key takeaways overall? So I think the key takeaway from that poster was that um, although some small studies have shown higher endothelin levels in patients with portal pulmonary hypertension, that it's probably not the whole picture and there's probably other pathways that are are playing a stronger role in the development of disease that still need to be elucidated. Okay, and how about the other one? The other poster we looked at was just a descriptive study looking at the um, describing patients who were listed for liver transplant at our institution who had portopulmonary hypertension and then looking at some of their post-transplant outcomes. And what we found is that they're a very heterogeneous group in terms of the severity of their liver disease as well as the severity of their pulmonary hypertension. And post-transplant outcomes were actually that many of the patients got worse with liver transplants. So one of the, it was only nine patients, however, but one of the, the takeaways from that is that it's really a heterogeneous disease and we need better predictors to understand um, who is going to benefit the most from liver transplant in patients with protopulmonary hypertension. So where will you go next? Answering that question or what else will you try to do? So moving on, I think we're, we're going to try and do a, a a broader view to look at different biomarkers that may be involved in portal pulmonary hypertension to identify novel pathways that could potentially be targets for treatment. And then we've also developed a working group sponsored by the Pulmonary Hypertension Association to examine and revise the system for liver transplantation in patients with portal pulmonary hypertension. So that will be important in trying to identify who's going to benefit the most from liver transplant. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Come Thank back you. and keep us posted, okay? I will. You got it. <laughs> Thanks.